If you are somewhat remote and don't have a signal, today we'll learn how to communicate over Android devices using a wireless network adapter and a Raspberry Pi on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While traveling with friends through a remote area earlier this month, we were not able to communicate with each other as soon as we wandered out of cell phone range. Now, all of us had perfectly functional phones and those phones had multiple wireless radios. However, we weren't able to use them to effectively communicate for a number of reasons. Now, one is we had the idea of using a hotspot to tether everyone together, but unfortunately having a hotspot inside the car just proved to be too much metal in between us and the source for our phones to connect to. So a lot of our ideas actually needed to be outside the car, which was not a good idea for a little Verizon hotspot router. So as soon as I got here, I decided that I wanted to come up with a better solution. And today what we're gonna to try to do is use an Android application on multiple Android phones to communicate over voice so we can talk and basically be able to exchange information without needing to have a cellular network. Now this is great for rural, rural locations and we're also going to be using a ruggedized outdoor wireless network adapter that's kind of meant for like an RV or a boat or something, uh, which I found on AliExpress for I think $12. Now I like this one in particular because it is supported by Kali Linux, but there's a variety of other wireless network adapters and I recommend the Alpha 2U wireless network adapter if you really want a nice ruggedized wireless network adapter that works with Kali Linux. Now, we're actually not going to be using Kali today. We are going to be going back to the Pirate Box. But fortunately, if this is supported in Kali Linux, then you can virtually guarantee that it will be supported in Pirate Box. So I would pick basically the same wireless network adapters we previously re recommended for Kali Linux. Now, in order to follow along with this project, you will need a Raspberry Pi, and we recommend a Raspberry Pi 3. You'll also need a wireless network adapter like this giant one here, preferably one with a big antenna, and preferably one that is meant for outdoors. Now, if you wanna get fancy, you can get an outdoor one that has a panel adapter and point it at your target. But in general, I find that if this is the solution, having this up maybe in the middle car, if you have a caravan of cars as we did, might be a better solution in order to get everyone connected and able to exchange data. Now, once you have all this put together, if you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte article, which is linked in the description. Now, when you have your Raspberry Pi ready to go, then we can get started. So today we're going to dive into our goal of connecting multiple Android phones that are running an intercom app over Wi-Fi so we can communicate over a pretty long distance without actual infrastructure. Now this is important in rural areas and if you're ever going to do a carpool uh, where you have a, or a caravan I guess, where you have a bunch of people that need to communicate from different cars, maybe someone has a problem they have to pull over or you're going to want to pull over coming up ahead. It's difficult to stay in touch in these sorts of circumstances. So our goal is to create a relatively simple way of tying these devices together even when there's nothing out there to really do so and it's too far away to connect the devices directly. Now, there are some things like mesh networking where these devices can connect to each other directly, but again, in a, scenario, in a convoy type scenario, there's generally gonna be too much metal for the devices to uh, connect directly to each other, so we're looking for a better, more robust solution. So my first thought was to use this default sketch on the ESP8266 to create a Wi-Fi network and then have these two devices just connect to it and pass communication. But unfortunately, this won't work because this access point doesn't actually translate uh, anything between the two devices. So it can act as a relay and send information between the two. So originally uh, that idea I thought was great. I tested it, it turns out it doesn't work. So now we're on to the pirate box. And the pirate box is a really cool thing you can load up on the Raspberry Pi that acts as a offline communications box where you can connect to the wireless network and it has a chat, a file server, a bunch of other really great things. But what we're interested in today is the fact that it's based on a open, open source router technology that should have all the switching that we need in order to communicate over voice. So let's say there's a disaster scenario or we're somewhere really, really remote and we wanna be able to communicate over our phones, which everyone has, but we don't have access to uh, a cell phone network. Well, we can just pop up a pirate box and aside from being able to do file sharing, we can also go ahead and communicate over voice and in a big house or something like that, an intercom system that uh, maybe works when uh, the actual 
cell phone spot of coverage might be a little bit spotty or difficult in certain rooms can provide the extra coverage you need to at least get in touch with people. So uh, there's lots of cool stuff here. And if you want to figure out how to get started just absolutely from scratch with the Pirate Box, please check out our Null Byte video on doing exactly that, as you'll see here. Uh, so I, if you want to check it out, uh, go to the Null Byte article, which is titled Use a Raspberry Pi as a Dead Drop for Anonymous Offline Communication. Watch the video we recorded on setting this up. But in general, you'll need a Raspberry Pi, a USB flash drive, a micro SD card, a micro SD card reader, a power supply, and an Ethernet cable. All the basic stuff you need for the Raspberry Pi. We use the Raspberry Pi 3 because the Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't have an image for it yet. So the 3B Plus also works fine. That's what I'm using today. So I recommend that you download then uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 image here for the Pirate Box. You'll go ahead and flash that onto the SD card of the Raspberry Pi. And then once you power it up, you should be able to connect to the Wi-Fi network that it makes and uh, then log in over SSH. So here you can see that uh, our first task is going to be to find this thing once it's powered up. So I'm gonna turn my Wi-Fi on and I'm going to look for the Pirate Box Wi-Fi network. And it's pretty obvious based on the name, Pirate Box Share Freely. And we won't be able to get actual internet from it, but we should be able to actually uh, just do a quick scan and find out what the IP address is and then log in via SSH. So I'm gonna open up a terminal window I'm gonna do an ARP scan. And here I can see there's a Raspberry Pi Foundation that has an IP address of 192.168.771. That's almost definitely it. So we'll do SSH alarm at 192.168.771. Uh, we'll say yes. And then it looks like the default password is alarm. Oh, and it looks like it's been changed. Okay. so. We are now inside the uh, pirate box. And really all we need to do is change one variable in order to switch from the internal card on the Raspberry Pi to the network adapter, which we are currently actually using. So this is a pretty simple tutorial. Uh, we're gonna go and you can take a look at the documentation here, piratebox.cc, and you can see that there's a lot of different uh, kind of mods that you can do to make this more useful. You can see for switching the Wi-Fi adapter, it's pretty simple. You're just going to specify the uh, wireless network adapter you wanna prioritize in the slash boot slash Wi-Fi card slash config file. So if I wanna be really easy about it, I can go nano and then here, and I can see the current card selected is WLAN 1. Cool. So what does that mean? Well, let's exit, and if I type IF config, I can see that I have, uh, oh, actually only one card available. If I type uh, IPA, then I can see I have two cards available, WLAN 0 and WLAN 1. And the way that the Pirate Box seems to work is when it starts up, it selects one of these two and disables the other one. So if you type IF config and you can't see the one that you've plugged in, then just type IPA. And if you want to bring it up and make sure it works, you can type ifconfig wlan0 up and oops, sudo exclamation two exclamation points alarm. Oh no. And then cool. So if we type ifconfig again, boom, we have both of our uh, cards enabled. So this is the internal card on the Raspberry Pi. I'll make this larger. Here we go. So this is our internal card on the Raspberry Pi. This is our external card, which is huge and ruggedized and outdoors and can sit on top of a car or something like that. And um, now we are able to select either one of these. So to select it, we'll go back to our uh, configuration file here. Well, in this case, I'm not gonna change anything because it's already set to WLAN one, but if it was zero, we just do that, boom. We do control X. Uh, and then Y and enter to save. Oops. Oh, okay, so you have to sudo it. So, okay, so it looks like for whatever reason, my computer decided to disconnect and that's why it suddenly stopped working. So I'm gonna go ahead, wait for it to connect back to the pirate box and then SSH back in. Hopefully lets me back in with no fuss. No, I think I'm getting deauthed or something. There we go, okay, I'm in. All right, so I'm going to ifconfig. And then I'll hopefully go back up and my command will still be there. Yep, I can be in here. Uh, sudo nano uh, boot slash Wi-Fi card slash con dot config. I'll put in the password. All right, specify WLAN one, control X, and that will save it. I didn't actually change anything, so that was nice and easy. But if I did change something, 
let's say WLAN zero. Now that will use the internal card, control X, enter, and then there you go. Uh, so now we have changed the card that the Raspberry Pi is using and it will use the internal card instead. And that's basically how you switch back and forth. So one last time, I'm gonna switch back, WLAN one. You might have to reboot to apply these changes, but just keep that in mind. There we go, we switched the card back again, and now we're using the external card. All right, so now we're gonna get to the part where we actually connect with an Android phone and see if we can get some communication. So let's give it a try. Now, after we set up our pirate box, we can go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi network, although our phone will probably warn us that there's no internet available. Now that's okay because if we were to tap on this, it's just gonna take us to the Pirate Box interface, which allows us to do all this great stuff. But none of that's really what we're interested in today. We're really just interested in the fact that this is able to act as a switch and router communication with other devices that are on the same network. Now, if we go over to our, let's see, uh, application we'll be using here today, it's Intercom for Android, and there are other applications that can do basically the same thing and act as sort of an intercom over Wi-Fi, but I haven't tested any except this one out myself. So if you know of one that you like, feel free to leave it in the comments because I'm always looking for interesting stuff. But in this case, I've gotten this to one to work before, so let's go ahead and use it. Now, when you open it up, one thing that I've noticed is sometimes you won't be able to see anyone, even if you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network. And I find that a way of being able to fix that is if you go to the Bluetooth settings, and oops, go ahead and make sure that they are on first. Then um, provided that we are on either the same network or we both have Bluetooth on, we should be able to see if I can identify the device I wanna to connect to. Here we go, all right, so I can see a device. And in this case, I can see that uh, there's, there's a Wi-Fi icon, so I can just click on it and on my friend's phone, it is now going off. So there's a couple of different options here and you can do push to talk, which should echo a little bit. I can now talk and say something. Um, you can hear a little bit of the echo on my friend's phone. And I can also tap on this up here and this now does voice detection. So provided I am talking, it should detect my voice and transmit it continuously and I don't need to be pressing the button in order to transmit. Now this app is pretty cool. Um, as I said, the one problem is that often it won't immediately recognize someone. So I recognize that you go to the Bluetooth uh, connection settings and try to pair over Bluetooth. Because what I find is that if you don't immediately connect with your friend who's on the same network, then pairing over Bluetooth can somehow make it able to find the other device on the Wi-Fi network, and then everything seems to work just fine. But as you can see, uh, this works pretty well. After following our guide today, you should be able to connect multiple Android phones together, even if there's no cellular network available. Now there are some limitations to this, but in general, if you want to dive even deeper, you can load up a Raspberry Pi with OpenWRT. Now this is really cool and an open source router firmware that will allow you to dig into the options and do all sorts of interesting things, but it is a bit more complicated to set up, so instead we picked a project that's based on it, which has a lot more documentation. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, but please stop sending me requests to hack your girlfriend. We'll see you next time.